The dance around the maple is an ancient tradition, probably originated in Germanic cultures. Nowadays, it is performed in folk festivals or as a children's game in many European and American countries. The dancers twist the colored ribbons following precise movements. Then, they perform an inverse dance to undo the braid. The ribbons can be braided in different ways and new choreography can generate new braids. In fact, dances and braids have a lot to do with each other. Each of these dancers arrives in a colored position after each piece of the dance. So, at the end, they occupy the same positions as at the beginning of the dance. How can we keep track of the movements and make a static drawing that describes the dance? Let's formalize the dance. Turn the dancers into points. Let the points move in a disc. At each moment, the points are distinct. The dancers never collide. The points go back to their initial positions, but possibly they exchange places. If we draw the path described by each point on the disc, we can get a very complicated drawing. We see some intersections and we don't know who passed there first, so we cannot reconstruct the dance. A solution is to move the disc while the dance is being performed. In other words, we transform time into a spatial dimension, in this case, the vertical direction. Of course, in each moment, we have the same number of dancers. This means that at each level, a horizontal disc will meet each path exactly once. We have already seen diagrams like this. This is a braid. Following our convention, we should align the braid horizontally. But just for this chapter, we will change notation and draw braids vertically. Vice versa, given any braid, we can turn it into a dance. In other words, we now have a description of braids as the trace of dancing points. Braids and dances are the same thing. Now let's consider some particular dances, where dancers are in pairs, always holding hands. As before, all the positions held in the beginning have to be filled at the end of the dance. This time, a pair of dancers becomes an arc.
the arcs move, keeping the endpoints on a disk. They can turn, exchange positions, pass one over other, and so on. As before, we can translate the dance into a braid. We move the disc vertically and draw the paths described by the dancers, the endpoints of the arcs. Which braids are dances of couples? Of course, the non-dance, where all the points stay still, is of this type. So, the identity braid is a dance of couples. Performing a dance after another corresponds to composition of braids. Composing two dances of couples, we get a new dance of the same type. Also, the inverse of a dance of couple is of the same type. Then, we say that braids describing dances of couples form a subgroup of the braid group. It is called the Hilden subgroup. There are some simple dances in the subgroup. The two dancers within a single couple can exchange positions. Two couples can exchange positions. A couple can pass under the arms of another couple. Many other dances can be performed, but in fact, the three movements just described are sufficient to assemble all Hilda's dances. In other words, these are the generators of the Hilda subgroup. Finding the relations, as in the case of the break group, is much more complicated. What is all this good for? Recall that in chapter 3 we described a way to relate braids to knots via the closure. When we close a braid, we are actually adding new trivial strands and connecting each old strand with a new one, obtaining a knot. If we move the new strands behind the old ones, we obtain a different braid, closed in a new way. This closure can be done on each braid with an even number of strands. It is called the plait closure. Again, closing a braid as a plait, we obtain a knot. Recall the Alexander theorem, any knot can be obtained by closing a braid. We saw how to cut a knot to obtain a braid. From the closed braid we can obtain a plait, thus any knot can be obtained as the closure of a plait. Can we write a Markov theorem for the new closure, that is, which braids give the same knot via plat closure? We can do some simple moves. We can compose our braid with Hilden elements, both on the bottom or on the top. Moreover, we can add two strands and a crossing.
and go on like this using hidden elements and a new stabilization move. When we close the plot, the knot type will not change. We can retract the arcs and obtain the initial knot. Bierman showed that these moves are enough. Two braids give the same knot if and only if they can be turned into each other through a sequence of moves of the two types. So, the Hilden subgroup, that is, dances of couples, is one of the main ingredients of this theorem. Now a question arises. How can we recognize the Hilden elements? For example, this is a dance of couples. This is a Hilden braid too. This is not, since a single dancers of different couples cannot exchange positions. But in general, given a braid with an even number of strands, how can we check if it belongs to the Hilden subgroup? This is one of the classic problems in combinatorial group theory. In the case of the Hilden subgroup, there is a way to answer, that is, there is an algorithm, but in general, in less peculiar groups, there cannot exist as an algorithm. Again, we have bumped into an algorithmic problem, and again, we have found a connection with knot theory.